Good morning. Welcome to TMMS. Today we are going to see how metal sodium reacts with water. Sodium metal with the symbol Na with N capital and A small. This symbol has come from the word natrium of Latin origin. Earlier sodium metal was known as natrium. The symbol of the metal is Na with the superscript 23 which tells the number of protons and neutrons and the subscript 11 which is atomic number which talks about the number of protons in the nucleus and also it talks about the electrons in the orbits. And so the electronic configuration with this 11 electrons becomes 2, 8, 1. So it has 1, 2, 3 shells, so 3 electron shells and so it belongs to period 3 and it has 1 valence electron, this one and so it belongs to group 1. Let us look at the modern periodic table and the position of sodium as you can see it is in period 3 just as we saw earlier and in group 1 and being in this position it is highly reactive. Why is it reactive? Because it even reacts with oxygen in the air and forms an oxide and so it cannot be perceived as a shiny metal and therefore it is even stored in kerosene. Here you can see sodium metal which is stored in a dark brown glass bottle and it is stored in kerosene. You can see the pieces of metal here and you can see the liquid that is kerosene. Now here is the piece of sodium metal out here. As you can see it is still wet with kerosene. Now I am going to dry it nicely. You can see this sodium metal now it has become tarnished and brown and I am going to use a, the blunt side of this knife. You can see this one is the sharpened part and this one is the blunt part. I am going to hold this and I am going to cut it with the blunt side of it. Just watch. Can you see the shiny part? Did you see the shiny part? It gets tarnished so fast, so fast it gets tarnished. Look at that. It is the shiny part. Can you see now that shiny part has become dull white and soon it will become brown. It is reacting even with air, the oxygen of the air. You can see it is becoming more brownish now. Now watch this piece of sodium. I am going to cut it with the blunt side of the knife. You can see the, the sharp part is up and now I am cutting it and you can see because sodium has more atomic size and less binding energy it is soft and therefore you will see now I will open this and you will see the shiny part. Look at that. Can you see the shining part? It gets tarnished immediately. Just look at that. It's getting tarnished. Now you can see this beaker containing water. I'm taking this sodium piece and I'm going to drop it here and watch how it darts about. Watch that. It is reacting with water and it, re it is releasing hydrogen gas. Now I am putting one more piece. And the gas liberated is the hydrogen gas. Now let us test this solution with blue litmus. As you can see, blue litmus, there is no change. Blue litmus remains blue. 
Now let us take red litmus. Red litmus. It has turned blue. What does it prove? That it is an alkaline solution. Alkaline solution means it is going to be having hydroxyl group. Now I have this which is a pH paper. You see over here the different colors on this indicate the pH of each. So now this pH paper I will remove one sheet and I'm going to dip it in and you will see that it has turned and so you put it against this and now you will see that our pH is very close to 10. Can you see that this is your 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and our color over here for this it is very close to this 10 so you will see that whichever solution is formed over here it is a strong alkali. Here you are able to see the pH paper and this is the pH paper which we had dipped in our solution and you will see a pH paper has different colorations over here and according to the colors it can tell the value of pH. So this is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and on the other side you will see after that we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and so you will see that our color over here of our pH paper which was dipped in the solution and that and this color they are very similar. So you will see that our solution that was formed, that solution was strongly alkaline. Why? Because this is 10 and above pH means it is going to be a strong alkali. The strongest being 13 plus that is up to 14. Let us look at our reaction. So we had sodium and it reacted with H2O. And sodium was able to make this change inside water. And so what we will get is Na will take OH and it will become NaOH. And this H will be liberated. But now we cannot have only one atom of it. So we will write H2 which is a gas. And so everything will get doubled. So we have 2Na reacting with 2OH to give us 2NaOH and plus H2 gas. Now this because of this OH hydroxyl group this becomes an alkali and it is a strong alkali. Why? Because its pH as we saw in the experiment it was greater than 10. So it becomes a strong alkali. Now also understand that when it liberated hydrogen, it was the colorless gas and understand that liberation of this hydrogen and the reaction is very violent and that is why sodium is to be reacted very carefully with water. Please understand that we can have this alkali reacting with litmus will give us blue litmus will have no change. But if it is red litmus, it will turn blue. Also, of course, we will have methyl orange and we will also have phenolphthalein. Now, I am going to pour this solution into a small test tube. Just so that we can test this with methyl orange. So now, in this solution, I am adding methyl orange. You can see this methyl orange solution. I'm just adding a drop of it. You can see the color. You can see that with methyl orange, orange turns yellow. And that's why this is an alkali. Now let us try with phenolphthalein. Now for phenolphthalein, I will take another test tube. And here I have the bottle of phenolphthalein. Now phenolphthalein is a colorless indicator 
and I'm just taking a drop of it and I'm going to add it to this. See what has happened? It has turned pink. And so we conclude that phenolphthalein has become pink and so it has got presence of hydroxyl group and hence it's an alkali. So to conclude we will see that sodium metal is a highly reactive metal. It not only reacts with oxygen of the air but also with water. It is splitting water into H and OH, combines with this hydroxyl group to form sodium hydroxide NaOH and liberates hydrogen from water. Hydrogen is a colorless gas and you saw that during the reaction it was a violent reaction. Sometimes it can even have a small explosion. And also understand that hydrogen gas which is colorless can be tested by bringing a glowing splinter near it. It extinguishes the glowing splinter with a pop sound. That's a mini explosion it causes. That's why sodium reacting with water is a very very dangerous reaction. You must not have sodium drop near any water body because it will not only make the water alkaline and increase the pH of water but also it will release a whole lot of energy which causes the temperature of the water body causing harm to the aquatic life as it could be beyond the temperature tolerance of the aquatic life. And so we understand that this NaOH that is formed by me, how am I going to use this? I'm going to use it in my next video. I'm going to use it in identifying cations in analytical chemistry. And so you have seen this reaction which is exothermic reaction, how it took place how sodium darted about moving violently inside the water, reacting even with water, how it is stored under kerosene. And so I hope you have understood the reaction very well. Thank you for watching.